Well, what do you suppose today is? Well, today is the day I'm painting this baseboard out here. And this is how I'm going to do it, right like this. I, I've got my paint tray, and I like to use the paint tray because then I can dip just a little bit in there with my paintbrush. See, I only got from here to there so far because I've already done the base. I've done this little section here, this little section. I've done, I've done in the closet. And um, then before I started, well, I actually, after I did the closet, I thought, wait a minute, I should go around the existing baseboard and hit any, any areas where when we sanded, we got down to bare wood, or if there was any black marks, or if there was any little imperfections, I could go around there and um, put a little bit of paint with my paintbrush, and I've already done it. That way, it's all drying. I started up there because I knew I was gonna, I was gonna start up there, and then I was gonna go uh, on that wall there, and then this direction. So that's how I did when when I started just uh, um, covering up the dirt, uh, not dirty marks, but black marks and stuff. I cleaned it, I sanded it, I wiped it down, and all that. And still, there were some marks on it. So I went around and hit it with the paintbrush. That way, it's got basically two coats. Uh, over over the top of those marks. I even went behind the refrigerator because this one was all scuffed up along the edge where they were pushing the refrigerator in there. And I thought, what the heck, I might as well do it anyways. And I even went inside that little closet there. Of course I went in the bathroom and it's, you know, I took the lights down to do all the painting. So I did have my construction light, plugged that in, got all that taken care of, went around that way, zip, zap, zoom. And I'm ready again. I just finished that area. I didn't want to I didn't want to make a little video of that because um, it was kind of in the corner, but I'm going to start right here and, you know, just get your handy dandy craft paper out. Of course, I've got my bucket here with a little water in it. My sponge, look at this, my sponge is still dry because I haven't, I, I haven't hit the, um, the flooring. And as you re will remember, um, on this particular floor, because it's the vinyl uh, planking, we're gonna put a quarter round trim at the bottom. And I haven't decided yet uh, whether or not I'm gonna use five eighths or three quarters. Did you know they have uh, half inch, five eighths, three quarters? I think they even have three eighths. And, um, but, there's, but there's certain areas, I, I was thinking I'm gonna use five eighths for sure, but there's certain areas where um, the base is up kinda of high off the floor. Like, like over in here, uh, the gap is 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 a little bit high because this area had carpet with pad and we took that out and we decided to use this now now from this section back that way was oak uh, hardwood planking flooring and so the baseboard is not up as high off the ground as it is over here so later on you and I we're gonna make the decision whether or not to use 5 8 or three quarters but either way as long as I get the, the paint down next to the baseboard down next to the floor if I get it down there a quarter inch let's say from the floor does it make sense that I don't necessarily have to cut the baseboard in exactly down to the floor do I because there's a gap there and because I know at least I'll use at least five eighths or three quarter um, uh, quarter round so if that is up off the floor, quarter inch, three eighths, whatever, as long as I'm down, as long as I'm within a, a quarter inch from the floor, I should be okay, shouldn't I? Okay, so that's, that's what I'm doing. And, and then, you know, if I, do hit the, if I do hit the floor, if I hit the floor with paint, as long as it's from here within a, a half an inch of the floor, or of the baseboard, my quarter round is going to be at least 5 a, so it's going to stick out even further. I, I don't even have to necessarily wipe it off the floor. If I get some on the floor, if it's up close to the baseboards, you see what I'm saying? So, it's going to make it easy, easy greasy. And I'm just going to start right here. And, um, man, there's a little bit of light coming in uh, from down there. Maybe I can, maybe I can run it about, about there. How about like that? It's taking the flash mark off of there. And I'm just doing the baseboard right now. So I don't, I'm still gonna be doing the, uh, the door frames, but I'm doing the baseboard first 
And so I'm only concentrating on the baseboard. I'm gonna see if you can see how, me dipping into that, to this container. It's just my throwaway tray. And see, I can just, I can just grab a little bit. And I don't care if I get it on the wall, remember? Because I haven't cut in the walls yet. First things first, do the baseboard, do the door jams. And I'm gonna end up doing the door jams uh, with a different paintbrush, I think. So I'm only concentrating on the baseboard right now. Okay, see, I can, I, all I have to do is grab a little bit and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna uh, extend this out just a little. I wanna make sure I get that little inside corner there. Get that, okay, get that blended in. And then, I don't, I don't, I, I want to keep uh, dipping it in there and getting some paint on there. I don't want to get it out too far. See, once I, once I put it on sideways and I get it down there within a quarter inch or so of the floor, then I'm going to go back flat. You go back flat, you'll see that it's going to cover because white semi-gloss paint or any semi-gloss paint is going to have a tendency to slide off of whatever's there before. And they had white semi-gloss paint from before years ago, probably 15 years ago, when they built the condo that's probably never been painted since then. And when you put semi-gloss on, it's going to slide. You'll see when you cut it in, you're basically dragging, you're going to drag off some of the finished paint over the top. That's why you have to do it flat afterwards. Okay, once I got that little section, I'm just going to go back on that and hit that. Okay, so far so good. Just dip. I want to make sure you can see me dipping in there. Uh, I think, yeah, you can. Okay, man, every time I get down on my hands and knees, my nose starts running. I don't know what, what's going on with that. Okay, so, so now I'm, I'm going to extend the top and I'm just going to go maybe a foot and a half or so. That's it. And I want to make sure I get that whole top edge and, if I, and I want it to get up on the wall just a hair. Okay, because that will tell me that I've got it all cut in. Okay. Now I can see where I stopped right there. So I'm just going to dip a little bit of that. I'm just concentrating on the top OG trim for right now. Okay. Now I can, now I can take a nice little bit and see how I can get, get it on there. And then I go back, load it back up my paintbrush, and then now I can cut it in. And like I said, I'm going down to about two, to a quarter inch. Here's a little nib of hair or something. So I just get that off. Now I go back and forth flat. And where, where it transitioned into here, I just kind of lift up like that. Okay, like that. Now I can clean that up right there. I'm going to do a little bit more. And I think I'm going to leave the camera right where you're at. Uh, yeah, you can see that. Okay. It's as easy as this. You don't have to pay somebody else. You don't have to pay somebody else to do your painting. Okay. Do I like to paint? No, I don't like to paint. I'm getting sick painting. I've been painting in this condo for about three weeks. Two and a half, three weeks now. I just want to be done. I'm not a professional painter, but when I get done, it's going to look like a, like a professional painted it. Okay, see how I get it, I get it on like that. I've even got a line there, but now I can grab it with my, with my brush. I don't have as much on the tip. Now I can go back and cut it in. And I'm, I'm just getting it close to the craft paper. Now I'm flattening it out. You see a trend here? I'm doing it the same way every time. All right. Okay. I just kind of go back on that in case the paint has a slight ridge on there. And you notice I'm not going that far each time, am I? A foot, a foot or so. Foot and a half. 
just taking my time. I don't want to extend this any further, even though I have a little bit on my paintbrush, I'm going to do it about the same way every time so I know I got the, the same amount of paint on there. That's why I've got my knee pad because you see I'm down here kneeling so I can, I can be right down, down and dirty. And it looked like I needed a little bit more paint so I'm just going to put some more on. I'm not going to try to feather it out too far with the same amount on the brush. Okay, now I'm going to go back and forth that and finish it off. I don't want to finish it off from here this way because that paint over there is already sticky. So my last little bit as I'm going back and forth, I'm going to go that way. See, get down there like that. Now I'm going to just check that edge and I'm going to go some more. You'll get good at it. You'll get good at it. And it cracks me up. Some people, some painters I've seen, they paint the wall first. And then they get the paint from the wall onto the top edge of the baseboard. Then they have to cut that baseboard edge in. That edge is only 3 16 and, and they try to get it in there. It's like, do it the very opposite and then you don't have that problem. You know, I'm gonna cut the baseboard in last. Or the base from the wall to the baseboard last. You see what I mean? Doesn't it make sense to do the baseboard first? And I don't care. I really don't care if I get some if I get some on the wall. Okay? In fact, I want to get a little bit on the wall because I want the back edge of the baseboard hit entirely with my paint. So then when I cut in the wall, I'll cut in right to the nice new painted baseboard. Okay? I won't paint the I won't really cut in the wall today. I mean, I could later on. This stuff will skin up. As long as it's skinned up, this semi-gloss, it doesn't have to be cured before I start. And then see, if I, if, I, if I did all the baseboard, okay, and then if I wanted to cut in the walls, I could start uh, where I first started the baseboard, and you could feel on it with your hand, and, and, and it'll be smooth to the touch. And then you can you can start cutting in the wall if you want. I've got I've loaded the paint on here, kind of thick, and I'm just gonna go back and forth a little bit and get it off the edges of my paintbrush before I go down to cut it in. Down close to the floor, within a quarter inch or an eighth of an inch or even or even flush. Okay, and I can see. Because I'm down here like this, I can see what's going on. Okay, with the craft paper, I can do that kind of business and see where the paint is. That'll dry quick, like okay. And I can see where where everything is. And now I can go whew, like that. As long as you do it soon enough, that's going to blend in with the rest of your your uh, your paint. If I were to try to go over this and touch this up right now, I couldn't because this is sticky. It's sticky to the touch. That's why when you keep going, you got to keep going and do the whole wall as you're going. You don't really want to stop now and take a break. Take a break when you're done with one section of the wall, okay? And I find, I find going from left to right is easier for me than going from right to left. I mean, you try it however you want. But once you get the hang of it, whichever way feels better for you, fine. I mean, granted, when I start from left to right, when I, when I get into a corner, then I have to go from right to left, don't I? To finish off a wall, let's say, if it's in an inside corner. But I only have to do a little section of it, and I, and I can do it that way with no problem. Okay, get a little bit more paint on there. Now, rearrange it on my paintbrush. It's kind of a subtle move to rearrange it on the paintbrush before you go down and cut in. You don't want to cut in with a heavy, thick section, a bit of paint on your paintbrush. Then you're going to cause a line, you're going to cause runs, it's going to get on the floor, you're going to think, oh, I can't do this. But yes, you can. It's, 
it's all in the technique you know you try it you try it and it gets easier the more you do okay now I've just done that on over the craft paper I'm gonna be brave let's see what happens got the oink if I do it without without any craft craft paper do you think I can do it I'm gonna try it for your benefit and my own let's get you moved in here okay let's get you like uh, see that light on there you you can see that though now if I get any on the floor of course I got my bucket and my, and my water here right and and if you walk on your craft paper like I am right now check your foot and you can check it as you're standing on the craft paper to see if you have any paint on, your, on the bottoms of your feet let's say before you traipse it all over tarnation okay tarnation I like that word all right let's just see now the only thing I got to be careful of well a couple things is I don't want to start dragging this and just pulling it on the floor I don't want to scratch up the floor or anything like that okay and because I'm only taking a little bit of paint I'm really not inclined to think I'm going to drip too much paint on the floor okay I'm just going to do it the same way you might be nervous thinking oh, I don't know if I can do that Joe's done this a lot well I, I don't usually like I said I don't usually paint and when I do, I can do it, but um, I'm careful and stuff, okay? But I'm still a little leery too over the floor like that, but I'm just showing you to see if I can do it. That you don't have to drag the craft paper around all the place. Now I'm just cleaning off the, the edge of my brush, getting it over here. I can get it, you know. I'm just getting it close. I don't, I don't have to get it perfect, okay? I'm just getting it within an eighth or a quarter. Now I'm going to go back to that little section. Ooh. Whew. That. Fill that in. I'm going to go for the next section. Get this up. I've got a crummy uh, throwaway container in the bottom of these and this it's not the same size as everything else I don't know what's going on with that I just have to be careful when I when I move this around I hardly got any paint on there and I'm just gonna do a little more that's why I like to use my little paint tray I, I couldn't really do it like this in a bucket because I, I'm just getting the edge of this and I'm able to wipe it off and stuff. I can't do that if I'm carrying a little bucket around with me, can I? This way works really good. Okay. I just dip a little, a little more on there. Get it, get it on there. Go back and forth. Make sure my edge is kind of clean before I go in there and start cutting it in. I can. Usually I only run it once, but you can run it a couple times. If you get too much paint on there, you're going to see an edge at the bottom. Okay? And that's what you really don't want. There. Like that. Now I can... I'm just cleaning up that edge right there. Okay? Look at that. Almost looks like I know what I'm doing, huh? Almost. Almost. And I tell you, I'm just an average Joe. I keep, I keep telling people that on my videos. If I can do it, you can do it. You know, I'm not going to show you much of anything I think you can't do. So rest assured, you see a video of mine, and if I'm doing something on there, I just happen to think you could do it too. Okay? Getting it kind of close. Now I'm going to go back, make sure my edges are kind of clean. I still got plenty of paint on my paintbrush. 
to get down there. Good boom. Good boy. Look at that. Back and forth a couple times. Ah, oh, nice. Okay. I see one little thing right there. Nope, that's on the baseboard. Okay. See this one, th that gets built up on, on paint when I'm doing this. So I just have to kind of check that as I go. Okay. Now, I'm going to get you in there. We're, we're going to finish this. Don't worry. Finish this little section off here. No craft paper on the floor. Look at that. Look at that. I'm being brave. I could go all the way to the end of the wall, but usually I try to stick about with the same way. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna just go as far as I feel comfortable. Got my knee brace on, my back support on. Now see I didn't have enough paint there, I could tell, so I'm gonna get just a little more. See that ridge of paint, and I can take that. Move it around on my paintbrush. Oh, there's a little something in the paint. That's, you gotta get those things out of there. And, and now I can, I can cut it in. Like that. Back and forth this way, paddle it back and forth. Okay. There's another little something, right? No, nope, that's that same little thing from before. See, if I cut, if I go this way now, I can't leave it because when it dries, you can get all those marks. So go back and forth this way. You're finishing it off. I don't like to put all the paint on this way, but I can finish it off that way, can I? And that puts just that nice little top layer on there. Okay, now I'm just going to concentrate on this little section right here. Okay. You see anything hard here? Am I showing you anything hard yet? I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay, now because I'm at the end, well, I, I guess I could do it right there. Boom. Boom. Oh, that would almost hit the, I almost hit the wall or the floor, but I, but I didn't. And it would have been really close to the, to the edge of the wall. Anyways, you just, you just take your time. It's no speed demon here, okay? No speed racer when you're doing this painting on the base. Just take your time and you'll get, you, you get the hang of it. Trust me, you will. Okay? Now I gotta wrap around this, this corner. I guess, I guess I could show you that too. Let's, let's wrap it. Wrap it around the, the corner here. And I'm right up. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna get you over here. Okay, How about that. This goes up the stairwell, and the the baseboard uh, just stops right over here. And I think I'm gonna start over here first. Do this piece last. And when the carpet guys um, stretch the carpet in the stairwell, they got a couple marks on the sides, you know, from their kicker and stuff. And I've, I've, I've gotten off some of them with uh, simple green, but there's a couple, there's a couple more black marks. And if I need to, uh, 
I can't get them out, then I'll, I'll paint over them. Okay, I'm just getting, oh, that one I can get all the way down because I got about a quarter inch gap from there to the floor. Okay, make sure you don't get too much on your paintbrush at a time. That's why I use my little tray. See, I only have, I only have a little bit on there. If you saturate your paintbrush, of course you're going to get some on the floor. It's a given. Yeah. And what else, what else could I have done had I not had any craft paper? Do you, do you have another way I could have done this? If, if you're not quite sure you want to do it over the floor, well, I could have taken some masking tape, my inch and a half masking tape, and I could have ran an uh, inch and a half and maybe two layers all the way around the, on the floor. I could have. That would have been good too, right? But I'm not, I'm not doing that. I don't really need to do that. But that's another, that's another way you can do it. Okay. All right. Okay, now we got this edge. And when I get all done with this, I'll check the little outside corners. I don't want to build up too much paint. Then you get, then you get little runs or it, or when it dries, if it doesn't run all the way, uh, it might be built up on a corner. And you may think, oh, that was caulking from before. Well, no, sorry. It wasn't caulking, it was your paint. It just dried in a, in a bunch. Because you weren't, you weren't paying attention. Okay, there's another little something. I'll put that in the side of my, of my little paint tray. So I can, I can get on some paint that way if I want. Get down there. Now, I wouldn't leave it like that, see? I'm gonna run back flat, okay? That's how you want it. Now, now I can go back and kind of check other things. That little side piece, instead of going from bottom to top, I can run that flat, right? Okay, I see a little, edge here, but that's because uh, some caulking. It looks like there's some caulking there that if I really wanted to, once that all dries, then I could scrape that caulking off and then uh, retouch that up when I get ready to paint the door frames. Because I'm going to be painting the door frames next, but I really wanted to concentrate on these floors on the baseboard. You see how nice that turned out? I mean, look at that. How long did that take? It didn't, it didn't really take me that long to do this one little section here. See? Doesn't that look nice? I mean, you can do that too. Here, I told you, I've, I've got this all painted down at the bottom. And after that dries, then it's time to cut in the, the, the walls. I've done this little section out here. The baseboard looks like a professional painted that. Let me tell you, there's always a rhyme and reason to everything. Okay? So, I'm painting the baseboard first. When the baseboard gets dry, I will cut in the wall paint down to the top edge of the baseboard and it's going to look nice and clean. This section I still have to do. Okay? I'm still working down over here. So, on this wall, you saw how I was doing it from left to right. I could do it from right to left, but it takes me a little bit longer. And I, I just have a knack of doing the backhand that way. So on this little section of wall, where am I gonna start? Right over there on the left-hand side. And I'm gonna come this way. When I get bunched up in here, then I'll go from right to left, that last little bit. That next piece, left to right, left to right, right to left, over there. So then when I get this little section over here, okay, it's, it, it goes from there, up over here, over to the cabinet. Where am I gonna start? I'll give you one guess. Right there, 
Left to right, baby. That's how I'm gonna do it. And then I, see, you just take all these little sections. These are little mini projects, M-I-N-I, -I, mini projects, left to right, starting from there, kaboom, to stop. And when I do that little section in there, I, I, you know, I'm gonna, that's gonna be kinda tricky, but I'll be able to do it, and I'll, and I'll that one there, I don't know, I might put some masking tape, or I may put a little piece of craft paper down there, or something on that one because because I like to work you know you saw how I like to work and sometimes you can't paint that way you just have to you just have to kind of get used to it and and do things differently now in this bathroom here I'll, I'll have my construction light I'll plug my construction light in over here I'll have the light shining over here and where am I gonna start Ooh, I almost tripped over that okay there's a door right there. I can start right from there, can I? Left to right, left to right, left to right, left to right. Kaboom! Finish off over here. Then I've got this little, I got this little section of baseboard to do. I'm going to start right there, of course. Kaboom! This little section of baseboard right there. I'm going to start on the left hand side, but when I get over into there, then I have to go from right to left. And, I, and, and, and I'll be able to do it. It'll be fine. And most of this, I'm not going to use my craft paper. But I wanted to have the craft paper here in order to show you how easy it is when you have this craft paper. And you can get it at Home Depot. It's very, it's very inexpensive. It's about $13 for a big old roll. I think it's 250 feet. Uh, and, and there it is, the craft paper. See, I used it out here when I painted these doors. I just set it up along the wall, ma put masking tape down on that, and these doors have been sitting here for over two weeks, drying, curing, and of course, I that's the last thing I'm gonna it, last thing I'm gonna work on after I get done with all the painting and stuff. And obviously, I had to have them off until all the flooring got installed, all the carpet got installed, and all that. And and I'll be putting new new hardware on here, new hinges, new we had brass brass colored hinges from before like on this door I haven't painted this door yet because it was in the garage I'll be painting this um, you know as one little mini project M-I-N-I -I. and uh, this was the handles that were here from before well Momi likes the nickel plated handles so we're gonna we're gonna go to the store and try to find something that that she'll like maybe I, I kinda like the paddle handle but they also have some other ones that are smaller uh, in diameter with uh, at the top and um, We might go for those two what hey, whatever she wants We'll we'll end up getting at the store So she'll help me pick those out at the hardware store and and that the hinges will be nickel plated nickel color and then the door handles will be nickel or uh, brushed uh, Chrome or something like something like that. It, it'll look nice when it gets done, but the craft paper Yes, you get that craft paper. I use that for everything. I use that for just about everything. It comes in handy. And when I get done with it, I just fold it up one third over, one third over, boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. And then I step on it and it creases nice and easy. Then I can just take that, stack them, stack up all my craft paper and throw it away. It really works good. Okay, so. Enough of that. I got to keep working because I don't want my paintbrush to get too dry. All right. So that was your little training on painting your baseboard over your vinyl flooring before the uh, quarter round gets installed. Now, if there was quarter round already on here and you had to paint it, oh, you know, before you install your quarter round, you want, you, let's just talk about the quarter round here for a second. You want to paint that quarter round. Don't put it down first and then put masking tape down and try to paint the edge and all that kind of stuff and pull that up and clean it up off the floor. I mean, you could do it that way, but paint the, paint the quarter round first, but I'm going to get some stuff at the Home Depot and they have two different kinds of quarter round. They have some MDF uh, pre-prime quarter, quarter round, and then they have some, some stuff that's actually plastic material that's all kind of foamed together and uh, to make the quarter round and it's actually pretty good stuff 
and I'm hoping that is almost the same color as the baseboard. And if it is, I may not even paint it. I might just cut it and glue it up there and caulk the top after, uh, after it gets uh, installed and after it dries, I'll take some, some white caulking probably, put it on the back side up against the baseboard, put some masking tape on it until it dries, and then pull the masking tape off and then a nice tight bead of white caulking on the top of the quarter round and I may not have to do anything. That remains to be seen. That'll be on a different episode, but hey, I gotta get back to work. Thanks for joining me. Well, a few hours later, I got it all cut in. I got all the baseboards all nicely painted everywhere and um, I'm gonna let them dry and you know, I didn't want to do the, um, the door casings right now and I'm gonna do that next time because there's only so long I like to use a paintbrush uh, until I want to clean it out because it gets a lot of paint on there and, and some of it starts drying on there and then it stops working as good for me. And this is how I leave the paintbrush when I get done. I cleaned it all out, and then I take a paper towel, fold the paper towel in half, wrap it around there, and then bend it over like that, see? And let it dry, because there's nothing worse when you use a cut-in paintbrush to find out that you've got all kinds of little feeler uh, pieces sticking out and this this will help it dry and keep it all together but then even after that you see this one here um, if you see any little pieces sticking out you can you can pull those back and and then I use my trusty my trusty uh, carpet scissors I just use these and then I trim off before I get it into the paint. See, there's a, there's a couple stragglers. See those, those pieces off to the right, right up there. I'm gonna have to trim those off with my, uh, with my scissors. In fact, maybe I should do it right now. And I don't just trim them there. I, I pull this all the way down. And, and cut them off. You don't want to. You don't want to just cut them right in there. Pull them back and then snip them off. And I, I found, believe it or not, that I like this brush better to cut in nice tight areas more so than my other one. I used to use that one for everything, and now it's getting kind of old and tired. But hey, it worked out pretty good for the baseboard. But then in some areas, in the tips of the baseboards, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna use the other one and cut it in nice and tight and then, and then go up the, uh, uh, the, the door frame. Ah.